Hi, uh, my name is Seng Ho Yun, and I'm a PhD student at Purdue University. And today I'm going to talk about our work, iSoft, a customizable soft sensor with the real time continuous contact sensing and stretch sensing. And this work has been done with my colleague, uh, Ka, Yunbo, Guiming, Luis, and Sab, with uh, my advisor, Professor Karsik Romani. And Professor Romani could not attend this year's conference due to other commitment. So stretchable soap sensors have been explored as promising input that can add interactions to both uh, rigid and elastic surfaces. Still, the multi-step uh, process and the expensive equipment requirements uh, keep people from quickly making and deploying inexpensive and customizable soap sensors. So here we present iSoft, which provides users to fabricate soap sensor inexpensively uh, customize the interface easily and deploy them instantly. So for the relay works, our recent approaches have shown the potential for reducing the fabrication complexity and improving the design freedom for soft matter sensors. And our work also maintains the speed of low cost uh, soft matter sensors by introducing simple fabrication process along with the customization software toolkit. And electrical impedance tomography has been explored in the robotics field to implement uh, artificial skin and in HCI field for gesture recognition and touch sensing. Uh, we also utilize the EIT sensing to implement multimodal sensing for flexible as well as the stretchable form factors. And carbon elastomer has been wi used widely for sensing purpose uh, with its excellent piezo resistive properties. However, the long settling time and <clears throat> Long settling time requirements after deformation and nonlinear characteristics hinder researchers from utilizing uh, this material for real time applications. So, in our work, we achieve real time continuous contact sensing by overcoming these issues. And the advancement in electronics and sensors have promoted adding interac interactivity to different objects. Still, the customization has not been fully supported for the soft matter sensors due to the complex fabrication and design requirements. And here, we propose a workflow that can customize soft matter sensors. So in our work, we focus on three things. First, we put an effort on making a local sensor, and we enable rich sensing capability, capability with the proper sensor. And lastly, we support customization to entitle users with the design freedom. So how do we make the local sensors? So we, first, we reduce the fabrication steps. We use less equipment, and we utilize the single volume materials. So here is an overview of our fabrication process. So we employ the carbon filled silicone from the wacker, uh, which works as a piezo resistive sensor. And first, we mix the two parts components, and we apply this to the heat stabilized film using a pellet knife. And we can either use T-shirt heat press or the toaster oven with a steel jig. Uh, to be used in an oven, we had to use the jig because in order to keep the enough pressure during the curing. And the material can be cured in 140 seconds using T-shirt heat press, which is quite fast. But for the oven, it takes about 60 minutes to get fully cured. <clears throat> Our sensor is then fabricated with no additional material processing. And it is ready to be shaped into arbitrary 2D shapes. And we can also replace the film with the textile to embed the sensor onto the textile substrate. So here is our uh, overview of implementation of our electronic parts for EIT sensing. So we mainly utilize the 16-channel multiplexer with the microcontroller. And we attach the current source and the linear amplifier to provide fixed current and uh, read the voltage measurements. Here we apply less than 0.5 milliampere for the fixed current and observe frame rate greater than 50 hertz. And the cost of making these electrical components, including microcontroller, was about $30. And this can be further reduced over the commercial production phases. So with the local sensor, how, what kind of sensing capability uh, we are providing? So we provide discrete contact localization, which, which is discrete touch. And we provide continuous contact localization, which is a continuous touch, and stretch sensing. So we uh, put extra effort on providing real-time sensing, where all sensing introduced in here can be used in real-time with the real applications. So for our contact localization, we employ electrical impedance tomography. The basic workflow is forming a 
find an element model on the given shape, processing sensor values, and reconstructing images based on these values, and applying color blur detection to locate the fingertip contact. And EIT technique estimates the contact localization, contact position based on the resistance distribution from the conductive material. So here, an inverse problem analysis is used along with the measurement from the sensor boundary. In our work, we focus more on the processing sensor values. So previously, the difficulty of providing real-time sensing with a piezo-resistive uh, piezo material is due to the rebound elasticity. So when the contact pressure was applied and released to the carbon ferrous silicon, it causes a long settling time and small shifts uh, small shifts in baseline values. This makes it hard to do the real-time uh, continuous contact localization. To overcome the baseline shift issue, one limit could, would be using fast EIT, where the system updates the baseline calibration every frame. However, as you can see from the, this video, it lasts for the short amount of time, but it doesn't last for the case like when the fingertip, it, when we hold on to the same location, the fingertip does not create a new deformation after a short moment. Therefore, it is crucial for the system to aware the fingertip contact. So in, traditionally in EIT, the neighboring method has been utilized for measuring resistance of the material. So here, this current is fed through two electrodes, and the voltage differential is measured successively throughout the adjacent electro pairs. To entice the sensor with the fingertip contact awareness, we added the capacitor sensing channel to check the presence of the fingertip contact. And this allows system to update the baseline only during the presence of the fingertip contact. However, still there is another issue to fully provide continuous contact sensing. As you can see from this video, even with the aware awareness on the uh, fingertip contact, the residual deformation makes it hard to get the dynamic contact localization. As you can see, there is uh, some residual deformation still during the dynamic uh, fingertip movement. Therefore, it is also crucial to detect the movement of the fingertip. So we observed that the average of the over channel measurements of the change in output voltages uh, increased subsequently upon fingertip movement. So we use uh, this, uh, we utilize this change in output voltage to as an indicator to detect the fingertip movement. And we use the learning average of five frame, which is uh, 0.1 seconds in real time, to are uh, used to provide the stable and robust interaction. So by employing both contact and movement detection, we provide continuous contact localization in real time. And as you can see from this video, any form of continuous contact localization becomes feasible. And more detail on system workflow can be uh, found in the paper. So we also support stretching sensing where we use a regression model to recognize different levels of stretching. Currently, we only support stretching at loading instance only due to the hysteresis effect, where the sensor values are different at loading and unloading instances. So with up to 40% unidirectional stretch, we can form a robust regression model. We also test our sensors for the stability issue, and we tested the sensor up to 1,000 stretches, and we found that there is a sharp increase in the resistance up to first 50 stretches after initial fabrication. And as found in previous research, this is due to the breakdown of the internal carbon black network after the initial calibration of this carbon filled silicon. So how do we support customization? First, we provide the customization software toolkit for users to design the interface. We also uh, provide the hardware approach where the hard design, the, we support various shapes and the surfaces. So we provide a proof of concept toolkit where it generates a guidance image which users can refer in designing the sensor and deploying electrodes. And users can deploy their own personalized interface using this toolkit. So here is a short video of where users customize their interface. So first the users load the image and they can design their own interface by drag and drop the different uh, UIs. So this is an example of the music controller. Then the toolkit generates the guidance image for placing electrodes, and users can use this guidance image to shape the sensor, and as well as the placing the electrodes. And after placing the electrodes, the user can now use this uh, soft personalized functional soft sensor instantly. 
and more detailed implementation on this and algorithm for toolkit can be found in the paper. So here we summarize the technical evaluation. So we tested the contact localization accuracy in different sensor sizes and number of electrodes. Here the sensor thickness was 0.8 millimeters. First, we tested the activation force requirement. Since this is a resistant, uh, re <coughs> since we are based on the resistive reading, this requires some force to activate the sensors. And we tested it on all sensor regions, and the, the, the range of the contact force requirements uh, found out to be point around one to three Newton force. And we found out that this is the comfortable fingertip pressure range uh, according to the previous paper. And for targeting error, it came out to be around 4 to 7.5 millimeter for 16 electrodes and 10 to 18 millimeter for 8 electrodes. Uh, one thing we notice is that uh, there is an improvement of the 10 to 30 percent in errors if we only focusing on the 80 percent of the center area. So we also checked the feasibility of multimodal of the contact sensing and stretching sensing. First, we look at whether contact pressure can activate the stretching sensing. And as shown in this figure, the sensor values caused by contact sensing is much less than that of stretching sensing. Th therefore, it is very hard to mistrigger the stretching sensing due to the cont cont uh, contact sensing. And we also investigate the contact localization under stretching. So we, <coughs> we use a test jig to apply unidirectional stretch up to 40%. And we found that, that, that there's a slight increase in localization error, which is about 1.1 millimeter in difference when the material itself is uh, stretched for 40%. So this shows that the localization still works robustly under high strain. So now we evaluate our sensor with the real users. So first, we look at the discrete contact performance. So we use two by two centimeter grid on different sensor sizes, and we look at both the targeting accuracy and the distance errors. So the overall discrete targeting accuracy came out as 96%. As you can see, as the, this is the blue bars. And uh, the red bar indicates the distance error, which was, came out to be 8.5 millimeters. So the high targeting accuracy across all sensor sizes indicate that uh, our prototype supports robust discrete contact localization. And we also look at, we also explore the system accuracy for the continuous uh, contact localization. So here we use, we use the uh, vertical and the horizontal strokes where users uh, do the swiping vertically and horizontally on our sensor regions. And the, error, the average distance error about 8.7 millimeter for the ending contact points. Here the ending contact point meaning that the, we only look at the distance error at the end points. If we look at the overall stroke length, we found that it's a little bit higher because there's an initial, there's an error between the initial contact point and ending contact point, and it is came out to be 13 millimeters. And we, the only one thing we, no, we noticed is that the stroke distance errors were less than 10% of the sensor size for different sensor sizes. So we also evaluate the participant's targeting controllability with the stretching sensing. So our goal was to confirm how many stretching resolution users can handle. So we evaluate with the stretching range between, uh, so the, we use the uh, stretching resolution from two to 10 levels. And we found out that the, the, the average targeting accuracy was greater than 90% if three or fewer levels were provided. However, the performance drops sharply as four or more stretching levels were provided. So therefore it is recommended to limit the interaction to three or fewer levels for robust like stretching interactions. So what can you do with our prototype? So I'm showing, I'm going to showcase uh, five examples, applications with our uh, prototype. So in this example, a user can design and make various shape of interface using ISOF. As you can see, there are uh, arbitrary 2D shapes of sensors, and these sensors can work instantly with the discrete, continu uh, discrete and continuous contact sensing capabilities. Also, in our, this example, we attach our sensor to the adjustable, adjustable lamp arm. By attaching our prototype, the lamp arm becomes capable of sensing bending and discrete contact and swiping. And we can also squeeze our sensor to turn the lamp off. 
And this example demonstrates the versatile sensing capability. And in, in this example, we also utilize our prototype to design a sensor that can wrap around the 3D object. So users can load the 3D model and design the interface like they do in the 2D. And it will change the guidance image from the toolkit. And the fabricate sensor can be attached onto the cup with the adhesive, and the tumbler instantly turns into the music controller. And here, as you can see, users can control different uh, area to uh, activate the functions. So we can also fabricate our ISO using texture as a base substrate. And in this way, we can bring interactivity to the clothing. And various parts of clothing can become interactive, such as arm sleeves and the pockets. And our prototype can be also attached or embedded in a volumetric fabric, such as a neck pillow. Here, users are squeezing onto different locations to uh, change the channels, or squeezing and stretching on different sides to change the volumes. And this demonstrates the use of multimodal sensing, uh, sensing utilizing users' physical motions. So I'll conclude my talk with the limitation and future work. So in our current setting, our physical sensor size is limited. Uh, we test it up to the letter size. Uh, however, the sensor can be fabricated using an industrial heat compression, which is much larger than the, what we are using. And also, applying soft sensor conformably onto complex 3D surfaces remains unresolved. So the potential solution will be providing a feature of flattening complex 3D surface into 2D pieces. And current, current prototype lacks sensing other physical modalities, such as bending and multidirectional stretching. And also, we are not currently supporting concurrent multimodal sensing. So in our current work, we are in the process of exploring on supporting other physical modalities as well as concurrent multimodal sensing by formulating a deformation-aware system. And with this future approach, we expect to provide richer and more robust customizable soft sensors. Yeah, thank you for listening, and I'd like to answer any questions. Great talk. Um, I really like the lamp example at the end. It's yeah. a clever um, use of, of stretch as in addition to, to touch. Um, my question relates to um, touch while um, stretching. So you, you tested it on uniform stretching uh, sort of in the lab. Um, does it work as well if, if, if just a person is, is stretching in sort of a non-uniform direction? Yeah, so currently, in current work, we are only focused on the unidirectional stretching where the direction of the stretching is fixed. But in current, I mean, in, we are in the process of doing, applying the machine learning to actually recognizing the multidirectional stretchings. Okay, and it, does it work as well in the touch when there's no hard surface under? Sort of, if you're if you're touching fabric, it's kind of gonna go through. It's gonna stretch as you touch. Oh, uh, so react it, that way? yeah. So the 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 basic sensing uh, principle of this material is if there's a strain on the material, uh, it gives the change in the sensor signals. So even if it's in the air, if we uh, hold on to the two different uh, endpoints and to the. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I 